and welcome back to Victorious Educational Services, where I break down difficult concepts into easy steps. Our objective for today is to decompose fractions using area models to show equivalence. This lesson covers standards 4.nf.3b and 4.nf.4a and is based on Eureka Math Module 5 Lesson 6. By the end of this video, you will be able to use area models to show fraction equivalence. Okay, let's get started. This lesson is similar to the last video I posted, which I'll link above. But in this lesson, we are not working with just unit fractions, but other types of fractions as well. So our first problem states to use an area model to show that 2 fourths equals 4 eighths. Step 1 is to draw an area model representing one whole and then shading 2 fourths. Step two is to think about how you can use this model to show the decomposition of two fourths into eighths. If we draw two lines, we can break this into eighths. So I'll draw two dotted lines. And if we count our squares, we can see that they're broken into eighths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's always important to check that you decompose your area model into the correct amount of parts. For every one fourth that we have, we see that it takes two eighths to equal that same amount of shaded space. So here is that first one fourth we have and we can see it takes one, two eighths to equal that same amount of space in that one fourth. Now, this is important to keep in mind for when we write our addition and our multiplication sentences. How many eights are shaded? Well, if we count, we can see there are one, two, three, four eights that are shaded. Now, I want you to pause the video and try to independently write an addition and multiplication sentence to describe the decomposition. For the addition sentence, remember how we said that there are two eighths for every one fourth? Watch how I write this in order to demonstrate that. So we can write two fourths equals one eighth plus one eighth. And that represents right here, we have one eighth, we have one eighth, and that equals this whole part, which is one fourth. So what we're showing here is one fourth plus, because we're trying to get to two fourths, we add them again. And that gives us four eighths. And we have a similar situation for a multiplication sentence. We needed two eighths two times in order to equal two fourths. So we can write that as two fourths equals two times two eighths because we needed two eighths. This was two eighths and this is two eighths and we needed those two times to equal four eighths. Our second problem says to draw area models to show the decompositions represented by the number sentence below. Express each as a sum and product of unit fractions and use parentheses to show the relationship between the number sentences. So my first step is to draw an area model representing one whole and then shading three fifths. Think about how you can use this model to show the decomposition of three-fifths into tenths. If we draw one line, we can break this into tenths. You always want to count to make sure that your model is broken into the correct amount of pieces. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
Perfect. So we drew our one line and we see we broke this into tenths. Now, if you look at the shaded part, you can see for every one fifth that we have, it takes two tenths to equal that same amount of shaded space. So for every one fifth, we see that we have two tenths. Again, make sure you keep this in mind for when we write our addition and multiplication sentences. So now, how many tenths are shaded? One, two, three, four, five, six. We see we have six tenths that are shaded. Pause the video and try to independently write an addition and multiplication sentence to describe the decomposition the same way we did in the last problem. Okay, for the addition sentence, remember how we said that there are two tenths for every one fifth? Watch how I write this in order to demonstrate that. So for our addition sentence, we're writing three fifths equals one tenth plus one tenth, which remember that represents one fifth plus one tenth plus one tenth, which is another fifth, and another one tenth and one tenth, which gives us six tenths. So this addition sentence is showing us that three fifths is equivalent to six tenths. Remember, each of those two tenths added up to one fifth, and we needed three fifths, so you can see how that's equivalent. We have a similar situation for a multiplication sentence. So remember, we needed two tenths three times, as you can see in our addition sentence with our parentheses, in order to equal three fifths. So I'll show you how to write that. Three fifths equals three times two tenths, which equals six tenths. So our addition sentence really helps us with our multiplication sentence. We can see that we need a two tenths, one, two, three times, which is where we got the three from, and that gave us six tenths. So our addition sentence and our multiplication sentence both showed that these fractions are equivalent. All right, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope this video helped you. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. Um, if this video helped you, leave a comment as well so I can see that these videos are really helping you guys. Please like and subscribe so I can continue to provide free educational content. Thank you and bye.